In this screencast, I'm going to discuss the important issue of interchange of order of integration. And by important, I don't so much mean that it's the kind of thing that you will encounter a great deal in practice, but it's the real test of whether you understand, if one understands integration in general uh, domains and geometries, if one can properly interchange order of integration. So let's do it. So here we are. We're given, um, we're given this uh, repeated integral to evaluate. We're just asked to evaluate it. And if you start to do that, you will very quickly realize that uh, this inner integral here that you have to do, I'll erase this in just a second, you have to do this inner integral, and it involves integrating uh, sine of y squared dy. And uh, you'll think about it, and you realize you don't know how to do that, and so you're stuck right at the very beginning. So you think, well, okay, I'll just uh, do the integrals, uh, rather than start with the y integral, I'll do the x integral first, that would uh, seem to be a better approach. And so you think, well, okay, I'll just uh, I'll just interchange these. We saw before with uh, with rectangles that we could just change the order of integration. And so I'll put uh, x to one, zero to one, sine y squared dx dy. And that takes care of my problem here with the uh, with the integrand. But uh, this makes no sense. This is uh, on so many levels it's hard to it's hard to describe. But uh, in particular in the, uh, one thing you can see is that you'll, you can easily do now this inner integral. You'll get a result. You'll then come along to do the outer integral. Well, first of all, you won't be able to do it. And even if you could and substitute in this, this, uh, this limit here, this lower limit of x, uh, you would have an answer that depends on x. And clearly, the answer can't depend on x. So it just makes no sense. All right, so what do you do? Well, the thing that you do is you realize that, that this is fundamentally a uh, it's a double integral of sine of y squared dA over some region omega. And so what you want to do, I don't know why I did that in orange, what you want to do is come down here and you need to, you need to answer what is omega. And you need to do a sketch. I don't care whether the, uh, the question asks for a sketch or not, you'd be foolish not to, uh, not to be drawing sketches of these things. Although in this case the geometry is, is rather simple. All right, so that's what we need to answer. And so I'll go ahead and move some coordinate axes, x and y as usual. And let's see. So what we know here is the x integral is on the outside. So we know x goes between naught and one. So in fact, I'm not going to. It doesn't even go negative. Let's just. Uh, st so x is going to go between naught and one. And we don't know yet what y is, but but the, 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 that's the range of x that we need to consider. Now, what does y for each for each x? What does y go between? Y goes between x and one. So let me just do one of these. So for any x here, y is going to go from there up to 1. Right? And that's true for any x. So I can begin to now draw it. And you'll deduce that the, the slower bound is that. And the upper bound is this. OK, now I'll write on here. So the slower bound is um, when y is equal to x. The upper bound is y is equal to 1. So that then is omega. So now what do we do? What we, what we now have is, we can think of it this way, you won't write all these immediate steps uh, in the future, but uh, conceptually what we have now is we, we know that this repeated integral corresponds to this double integral, and we now know what its domain is. We just say, look, we can write this double integral as a, rather than as a uh, type 1 integral, we'll write it as a type 2 integral, so we're just going to take slices along here instead. We'll choose a range of y between naught and 1, and we'll choose a, a range of x. So. So just go over to a type 2 integral instead. And before actually writing down the integral, I want to just uh, decide the bounds. Actually, I think I'm going to keep going below here. All right, so what are the bounds? Um, we need to first pick the range of y, and y will be between 0 and 1. OK, let me do it this way. I'm going to start doing, rather than write out full set, I'm just going to say omega colon, meaning the description omega is y is between 0 and 1. And what is x between? Now, x is between 0. So for any y, x starts at 0. What does it go up to? Well, x up, goes up to y. But I'm going to just, for future reference and the way you should think about it, let me say it this way. This was stated as, for any x, what is the value of y? Uh, even though it's so simple in this case, I want to say for any, for any y, what is the value of x? So you give me y, what is x? Well, it's simply y. Sorry, maybe I made that too. It was too simple to make, uh, make the point there. But anyway. This is the same domain. It's the same domain. There's a domain here, which gives me here, here, here. It's the same domain. It's now written with y between definite limits, and x is given between limits that depend on y. I, 
I can now therefore write this, and I'll just go up here, I can now write this, the corresponding uh, repeated integral this way. So y is between naught and 1. Again, I just read off, I'm just going to read off from here without even thinking. And x now will be between naught and y. My integrand stays the same, dy dx. Excuse me, dx dy, of course. Okay, and you see this is not the same as this naive interchange. This is what the proper interchange is. All right, so now I can I can proceed to integrate. I don't think I'm going to want to bother with all again with all these steps, but you can see we now have the nice situation we're integrating with respect to x here. So the y is just a constant. So that's going to give us an x sine of y squared evaluated between naught and y dy. So essentially by design we now have we now have y sine y squared dy which is something you can integrate minus one half cosine y squared between naught and one giving one half one minus cosine of one again it's not so much the um, this actual final integration that I care about it's the way we went through the process of exchanging the limits so let me do a couple more examples it's really an important topic and it's important that you get it right so I'm going to do uh, an example this is from a past exam paper and uh, on the examination, you were you were asked, asked explicitly to exchange the the limits of integration to evaluate this repeated integral by exchanging the limits. But here, let's just say we were asked to evaluate. So what what is it you would do? Again, the, the key thing that you have to ask yourself is what is omega? What is this domain? What does the domain corresponding to these limits look like? And let's draw it. I did make up the exam question, so I know what it looks like. All right, so the, what we have here is y is on the outside, so these limits are y. So we know that y is going to go between 0 and 4. I'll call that 0 and I'll call that 4. So that's the range of y's. Now for each y, what does x go between? x starts at 0, and I want to do that. So x, for any given y, you're at this y. x starts here at 0, and it goes up to this point here, and that point is on the curve uh, x is equal to the square root of 4 minus y. Of course, you don't like to think about it that way, neither do I. We want to think about it as uh, x squared is equal to 4 minus y. That is to say, y is equal to 4 minus x squared. That we can understand more easily. And we see that this upper bound, therefore, is like this. When it comes down, I'll leave it for you to fit. It hits 2. Right, good. From that uh, little bit of calculation, we now know what our domain is. And once you have that, it's a rather straightforward task to simply turn it into an integral the other way. All right, so we're just going to rewrite omega. Now again, I'll just do it this way. So what is the domain omega? Now we want to have x on the outside between definite limits. What's the range of x? x will be go between 0 and 2. And for every y, what, is, what does x go between? Excuse me, for every x, what does y go between? y starts at 0. So y starts at 0. What does it go up to? It goes up to this which again, now we've already written it, you have to write it as y is a function of x. We've already done that just to graph it, so we, we have it for minus x squared. And um, there, that's omega. Again, conceptually, this corresponds to a double integral. That double integral over this uh, domain omega, we can express that double integral as a repeated integral using using this range, and we simply do that. But again, you, what you're doing is reversing the order of integrations, but you're doing it the right way. Anyway, so now we can just read off here. x goes between 0 and 2. Again, I don't have to think anymore. I just read them off here. y goes between 0 and 4 minus x squared. Then our integrand remains the same. I now have dy dx. And I'm not going to do the integral for you, but you now have to do, first do this inner integral. And hopefully your eye will tell you right away uh, what nice situation you have there. One more, real fast, a little bit harder, but same idea. Again, past exam question. So you're asked to evaluate this. Again, on the actual exam, you were told to do it by reversing the order of integration. But if you hadn't been to that, you would see, oh boy, I got a real big mess here to integrate this, and not impossible, but um, rather not. So let's ask the question, what is omega? What is the domain? And again, a, a plot. You may or may not have to do some algebra for plotting. Again, so y is on the outside, so we know that y is going to go between naught and 1. That one's going to be a little bit big for what's going to happen next. Make one there, right? 
So that would be y between 0 and 1. And for each y, what does x go between? x starts at 1, so if I'm at some y here, some y, I'm always going to start at x equal 1. I'll always start here, and where do I go to? I'll go to uh, e to the y. And uh, I like this. All right, now what does that look like? So let me start drawing this. I know I start at 1. I'll always start at 1. So this boundary is, uh, is fixed. And I know or, this is the point that I went to where x was equal to e to the y. Um, and if you think about what that looks like, or if you just go ahead and solve, since you're going to need to do that anyway, that is to say y is equal to log x. I hope we can plot log of x. It looks like this. y is fixed here. So that then is my region omega. Again, I'm going to need, the, let me move this over, I'm going to need this, plus I need some room down here. So let's move that over there for the moment. What I need to do now is, is decide what my range in x is. Well, we know that this lower bound is 1, and what's the upper bound? That's where those intersect. You can see that that'll be e. And so that'll be my range of x. So let me just start writing this down here. Omega will then be given as a type 1 integral. x will go between 1 and e. And for every value of x, I need the range of y. And what is the range of y? Well, it starts here. I have y as a function of x. But y starts at log x and goes up to 1. So those are my bounds. Yeah, let me just say a little bit about this. You're always, I think, you're always going to have to um, do, a, do a function inversion here. That is to say, here, because I'm, I'm integrating an x at a fixed y, my upper bound is x as a function of y. Uh, now I'm going to do an integral at fixed, uh, at fixed x over a range of y, so I need to know what, what the lower bound is. Now it's now the lower bound, the lower bound of y, and y for each x. So I had to do this inversion. In fact, I did the inversion first because I just it's easier for me to plot the log than... Anyway, there you go. So now we can just uh, finish this off. Again, we just now read off. x goes between 1 and e. y goes between log x and 1. We have this function here, 1 minus log x dy dx. Again, I won't do the integral. You'll see how nicely it was set up and how, how everything just kind of collapses at this point. So that finishes uh, this off. You just you need to practice these, as with all things, and mentally, uh, this is this is the question you have to ask, and draw a sketch. Just always draw a sketch.